today we're going to be discussing about the people that actually help you to build your business helping you to scale helping you to move those products off the shelf you'll never be able to increase inventory if you cannot identify the people helping you to build this company for our new friends joining this channel my name is Ejibola Adetokubo Taiwo a banker turned entrepreneur my friends call me the retail queen before we get started I would like you to know that the CEO does not build the business the CEO isn't the one helping to scale or grow the business. Guess who? Your tribe. The question is, who are the people you've got in your tribe? Do you know them? Can you identify them? How do you connect with them? Do you connect with them? How do you communicate with them? How do you network with them? How do they know about your new product? Did you consider them in your growth plan for this year? How do they know about the new things going on within your company? These are the things we're going to be talking about today. I've identified three types of business tribes, the B2C, the B2B, and the big box retailers. The B2C are the consumers, those that go on your website, those that work in store, the everyday buyer, while the B2B are your corporate clients, the big organizations, that buy in bulk from you. And the third type are the big box retailers, the ones that have the mass food traffic. Let's define what a tribe is. Some brands define their tribe as their fans, their besties, their army, their VIPs, just to retain and connect with their database of clients. For the purpose of this conversation, I'm going to define the business tribe as the people that love your brand, that loves what it stands for. Those that love your product and buy from you. They repeat purchase and refer friends and family. They talk about your product with their friends. They subscribe to your email list. They follow you on your social platform. They adore everything about your product. These are the people that help you to increase inventory. These are the people that help you to mass produce. These are the people that help you to scale and grow your business. Those are the people you need to keep close. Those are the tribe that builds your business. For you to be able to effectively connect with your tribe, I'm going to share with you four tips. It's important for you to clearly define the tribe you'd like to concentrate on for the year. Do you want to go all out and concentrate on the three tribe I defined earlier? the B2C, the B2B, and the big box stores, or perhaps you'd like to concentrate on just one for the year 2024. Clearly identifying the tribe you'd like to concentrate on for the year helps you to get clarity, keeps you on track, and to stay focused. Identifying the tribe you'd like to concentrate on for the year also helps you to gather the needed data that you can analyze every month and at the end of the year to see how well you have performed in that month or for the whole year. Tip number two, perhaps last year you concentrated on the B2C clients and for this year you'd like to move towards securing big contracts and getting larger POs. Then this is what you need to do first. You need to draw up what I call a B2B tribe acquisition plan strategy. I'll be posting the exact B2B tribe acquisition plan strategy that I use for my business year in, year out, tomorrow, Friday. So come back to this channel and download and use for your brand. Tip number three, explore execution tools. There are several tools you can use in implementing the acquisition plan strategy. The most effective one I will talk about today is to develop entry points to get to the tribe you aim for. Once you're in, there are several layers of products you can market and sell to them. Execution tools help you to achieve two things. One, it helps you to acquire the number of B2B clients that needs to be on your tribe list that your level of production can serve for the year. Two, it helps you to implement a rollover momentum with this client. In other words, it helps you to build repeat business with them. 
creating large orders on the constant basis with your constant drive, particularly your B2B client, is the only way to scale your business. Once you get your B2B customers to the door, which is fundamental, now get them in the door by offering them new product consistently. This way you are giving them a new taste of your brand, a new taste of your innovation, a new taste of your creativity. This will keep them on your list. Treat them special by giving them the opportunity to buy something exclusively. Build a community around them. Tip number four, nurture your tribe. The most important input for the success of any business is the tribe. What do tribes do? They have the same belief system. They move in the same way. They act in the same way. So for whatever you're building, create a community that behaves and look the same. For instance, the B2B tribe, they buy in bulk, they issue PO, they want consistent inventory, they want a good price point, they want a great margin, they want a good product positioning that would make your product fly on the shelf. That's their behavioral pattern. That's the way they act. Now let's talk about my company, Simply AG Bola. Three years ago, I knew I wanted to penetrate the big box store. I knew I wanted to have the B2B on my tribe list. What did I do? I went back to the drawing board and I drew up a B2B tribe acquisition plan strategy for my premium and unique stationery and gift items. After that, I implemented the entry point execution tool because now I know the number of B2B clients on my tribe list and the number of inventory in my storage that I could serve for a whole year. How was I able to achieve this? That was when I went from producing 2,000 units to half a million units of product because this is what will get me the margin to give to my B2B client. This is what will get me to the price point they needed. This is what will position me right on their shelf. And this is what I needed to grow my brand. I was able to achieve this because I had a strategy plan in place, because I had an execution tool I could use in achieving this. And lastly, why did I go the route of the B2B tribe? Because I wanted the big box store to be the carrier and promoter of my product. I really do hope you've enjoyed today's episode of what you need to put in place to increase inventory, to grow and to scale that business. Join me again next week on another episode of the Journal of a Female CEO, one of the Ejibola series on the Ejibola YouTube channel. Before I let you go, I would like you to do me one huge favor. Please subscribe, like, comment and share this episode with your friends, with a colleague, with a business partner. Let's grow this channel together. Dream bigger.